Greetings RC model geeks and here we are in the shed yet again for part 33 of the Sarik Hobbies de Havilland Canada chipmunk build right well I've been working on the uh, the canopy this morning um, just modifying a few bits and pieces that we'll need to modify to make uh, the canopy slidable and one of the things we're going to have to make is uh, an A-frame like this here that is going to sit up in the front and support the front uh, windscreen because it's going to be cut down there so this can slide back so um, we need to create a, an extra frame to support that front canopy which I have now made and that is going to slot if we turn it around hey, that is going to slot into the fuselage something like that and then the canopy is going to go around it but I'm still working on the exact methodology but we're getting there anyway uh, roll of honor for the day we've got John Mark and Werner thank you for your donations your uh, all stars, as I keep saying, General Steer people, is amazing. And this shed, or the big shed, is going to happen. Um, we're well on track. There's a few things in planning at the moment, and as soon as I uh, can give you any more information, I will. Right, so I'm going to get on with this uh, canopy. Uh, see how far we get. We won't get far today. It's Sunday. Uh, we're just plodding along with it today. No rushing. Right. Oh, much time has passed in the geek's shed. <laughs> Trying to do this canopy so that it will slide. And boy, is it taking time. Uh, basically, I've got to remake all of the uh, the ply formers that uh, that go in the canopy. Um, oh, yeah, uh, because if the canopy's fixed, you don't have to worry about clearances when the canopy slides back because it doesn't. <laughs> um, but because the canopy is sliding, we've got things in the way, like this, uh, you know, combing over the instrument panel here, the combing at the back. So, you know, formers that are in the canopy, and there's uh, three of them, uh, have got to clear as it slides back. And then, of course, we need an extra former uh, for this front section here, where the uh, the cockpit windscreen is. And here is the cockpit windscreen, and as you can see, it fits perfectly over this former that I've made here. And also, there's a metal tube support that goes down there, and that is perfect now you've got to get this spot on because when the things go together everything's got to line up you know you can't have stupid gaps and stuff uh, it's not going to look right now I mean we could have um, we could have made part of the frame uh, of this canopy out of lipo plate and that was an option but because this is a molded canopy They've actually moulded in like the metal work into the canopy already. 
so it's already proud and high. If you go and stick some like life plate on top of that, it's just going to look uh, stupid. Because I think uh, originally uh, this uh, design was basically made out of um, acetate sheet, this canopy, you know. Um, but then later on, they've produced uh, a moulded canopy. So, that is what I've done so far. Basically, uh, this A frame here. That tube painted the combing over the front cockpit, the combing over the rear cockpit, and I've cut out the front part of the canopy. Like I said, I've got that spot bollock, perfect line, wonderful. Then we come to the main canopy. I'll tell you what, I'm having serious trouble finding something that will actually glue this canopy well. Um, I've tried. I've tried most things. So we did some like test runs with some offcuts, um, and uh, you know stuff just didn't stick very well. Um, every kind of glue. So uh, in the end, the the best actually we found, ironically, uh, was the old um, industrial gauge super glue again. Um, that stuck the canopy very well, but of course the problem with that is that you get that vapour off it when you glue, and, uh, and that vapour tends to cloud the uh, uh, the plastic, and you have to like wipe it off. Uh, yeah, interestingly, that is the same principle that they you can use for getting fingerprints off of things like glass. Because they put uh, an equivalent of super glue uh, in a chamber with the object that's got fingerprints on it, and um, uh, the vapors stick to the fingerprints, and then they can pull off the fingerprints off stuff like glass and things like that. Very clever. Anyway, a bit of nerdy stuff for you. Um, right, so. Yeah, here is the uh, the main canopy, and it's all sort of clamped up as I'm uh, sort of gluing the bits around it. Um, you know, because it just takes time for this stuff to to really cure on plastic. Uh, I've had to like clamp it, and it's a very slow job. You just got to slowly work your way around. But that is actually on there now, on one side. <laughs> on one side and that's it but yeah the canopy is gonna slot over there like that that's gonna slot up to there and oh, we're getting pretty close to something that might even work um, yeah if you see you've got to I have to cut away this uh, this bottom bit of the former here on the canopy so that it clears the combing so you're playing with really thin bits of uh, of, um, of ply but it is getting there this I reckon this canopy is going to take me a couple of days uh, of just fiddling and farting around uh, to get it uh, how I want it slow process but anyway that's life if we want a good plane that's what we've got to do now last night uh, old salt marsh and me went down to the beach and we flew the tornado now unfortunately we didn't get any video of it it was only Salt Marsh and me, and Salt Marsh only had his mobile phone, and of course a mobile phone uh, trying to film a model plane is a joke. Uh, Mad Colin didn't turn up because uh, he couldn't be asked, and uh, yeah, so we didn't get any video of it last night. But I can tell you, it flew beautiful. Uh, Pete was almost uh, speechless. 
So uh, hopefully salt marsh won't squirrel it away in the loft too soon and uh, maybe another evening this week we can actually get some proper video of it. But I can say it flew beautiful. And to all those people that said, oh, that won't take off, the angles of the wheels are wrong and everything. Strangely enough, it took off perfectly. And it's got bags of power. It's well overpowered, let me tell you. I was flying it round on under half throttle most of the time. It is uh, a monster. Brilliant. And that is it. Uh, there is no more today. I'm all canopied out for the day, really. Um, yeah. But like I said, it is getting there. It's just going to take some time. So it might not be a, a video every day. It might be a video every other day for a couple of days. Just because, you know, it's going to take a long time to get this spot bollock right. We'll have to see uh, how it goes. Anyway, I'll uh, see you all in the next video. Like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to have a look at Sarek Hobby's website and uh, see if there's anything on there that takes your fancy. Planes, trains, boats, you name it, they got it. And don't forget the Big Shed Fund, that's coming along nicely. Hopefully we'll have some uh, more info in a few days um, when I get to go and meet somebody. Anyway, enough about that. So, see you all tomorrow. Bye. Thank you for watching Captain Rob's RC Model Geeks. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to click that like button. If you want to see more of the same type of videos, don't forget you can subscribe. If you want to support us, you can use PayPal. PayPal.me forward slash RC Model Geeks. If you want to contact us, you can email us rcmodelgeeks at gmail.com We look forward to seeing you in the next video.